All right, so I'm graphing angles um, in a coordinate plane or a Cartesian plane. Uh, and normally we talk about angles, we're thinking about, oh, the angle inside of a triangle or inside of a, some type of polygon. Uh, so if you're confused on what kind of angles we're talking about here, we're talking about uh, rotations, or, and that's where radians get involved, and that's what 7 pi over 3 is. Uh, I did an explanation video a little earlier, so if you're like, I have no idea what this is, I'd go back to my introduction video about this, but I'm going to go a little faster pace. So, in this, I have negative 7 pi over 3, and I need to graph this angle. So, I'm going to teach you a little shortcut here from going from radians to degrees. I'm going to go ahead and tell you that every pi over 3 equals 60 degrees, which you would know because if you actually multiply this by 180 over pi, you'll discover that 3 goes into 180 60 times. So, think about this. If every 1 pi over 3 is 60 degrees, and I have 7 of them, so 7 times 60 is actually going to be 420, but it's going to be negative 420. Uh, and by the way, because it's green, that's unintentional, just for the record. Okay. So, and it's negative because I, I hate it. All right. So, negative 420, which we know, if we look at that, that's bigger than 360, because we know that all the way around, one rotation is 360. But at 420, we actually are going to go more than once. But I always get confused on where to stop, because, like, I'll go around and around and around, and eventually I'll get lost. So, I like to eliminate rotations from the angle. So what I'm going to do is, I know that there's 360 degrees, I can go around once into 420. So I'm going to add 360, which I just, that just means I do the opposite, okay? So if I add 360 to negative 420, that's actually going to give me negative 60 degrees. So notice my green uh, spiral here. So I've gone around once, and then I still need to go another 60 degrees. Also notice how I went clockwise, because if it's a negative angle, we're going opposite of the quadrant, so we actually go 4, 3, 2, 1. Uh, or, again, we go clockwise because we're losing time if time goes fast. So my angle would look like this, okay? So negative uh, 420, and again, I'm just kind of graphing negative 60 there. All right, so it ends up in quadrant number 4, right? So that's quadrant number 4. All right, and then... I always like introducing this to my students right now, is we can use this information to find a reference angle, okay? So a reference angle is, you'll notice, if I were to draw a dotted line to the x-axis, that is a right angle, right? Because it's perpendicular. And if I have a right triangle, it'd be really helpful to know what those side lengths are, right? Well, I would have to know some of the angles first. So in this triangle... I wish I could find this angle right here, closest to the origin. Well, let's think about it. So, if I went all the way around and this is negative 60 degrees, wouldn't that angle be just be 60 degrees? Yes, it would. And that's called my reference angle, 60 degrees. And so I'll do another example of that here in a second. Um, but if you have more than one rotation, uh, just go ahead and that's what I did. I added 360. And so you can get rid of rotations to actually know where you stop. Because a lot of students will say, like, I don't know where to stop. I don't know which quadrant to stop in. But if you actually take away the rotations, you can see, oh, okay, it stops at negative 60. Or, it go, oh, it stops at 210, stops at 300, whatever it might be. So just keep, be aware of that. And that is how you deal with negative angles and how you deal with multiple rotations.